But there are solutions to international problems in the same way there's solutions to business problems if we look hard enough because I'm one of those people who believes that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything we see is really a version of something else that's been before. I spent most of my career with uh, the Royal Irish Regiment. I also spent about half my career with the, the Special Air Service. And really, they're two very different disciplines. And, and the, uh, what you need to bring to those organizations are very different because the soldiers in one are very unlike the soldiers in another. The soldiers in the SAS come from the, 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 the main army, but they're expected to be much more independent, whereas soldiers in the Royal Irish Regiment have a huge, more dependency on you. They, they expect to be told what's to be done. And I found myself in a situation where I had to address what I discovered was a lack of confidence in the battalion, at the same time trying to turn them around and get them ready um, to do what they do best. And really taking an organization and turning it around when it's lost confidence, when it's, it's had that wobble, you have to step back and think, what is it you need to do? And the bottom line was that what I found that uh, on one hand I had to do was to talk to them about what they perceived had gone wrong. And actually, by talking about it, point out that some of the, 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 uh, the failures that they perceived weren't failures at all. In fact, they'd actually done very well. When you actually find yourself in the position of command, in the position of leadership in a large organization, you suddenly discover no one's ever told you how to do that. You go to courses and you, you grow up in organizations, you know the trade, but no one actually tells you how to lead what they need at the time. And the truth be known, you can't really write it down. You have to discover that. You have to kind of know that. And so people imagine in armies you just bark orders, but there comes a point when barking orders at people isn't enough. They have to want to do it and to follow your lead. And trying to deliver that lead, that's the trick ultimately. And it's a bit like saying to builders, you know, can you go and do some building in my house? Here's the keys. And say, well, what would you like done? I said, I don't know. You know, walk about with your arse hanging out and uh, make tea and make a mess and then give me a bill at the end. Um, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's like, well, what would you want the floor done or the paint? And I said, I don't know. What is, what's everybody else having done? Just go and do the building thing. And that's what the army's been told. Go and do some military stuff in Afghanistan for an indeterminate period until a bad thing stops and the good thing starts to happen. And the generals have said, yes, okay, but it doesn't work that way. And so it wouldn't have worked in Malaya. And that's where Gerald Templer refused to budge until they told him, what are we for? Why are we here? And eventually, even Churchill had to budge in this. And with much pain, he and Little got their heads together and they went back to uh, Templer and they said, independence by 1960. We want Malaya to be independent by that date. And he said, thank you very much. I now understand it. And when you think about it, when they said, get Malaya ready for independence by 1960, everything else fell out as an implied task. To get it ready for independence, of course you had to stop the insurgency. Also to get it ready for independence, you had to organize political parties. Also you had to organize a civil service. Also you had to transfer the military capacity from the, uh, the, the British army to a new Malaysian army. So you had to build a Malaysian army. All these other tasks fell out and suddenly everything became clear. And it's a really crucial factor. What are you for? The next point of the three, get your priorities right, get your organization right, was get the right people into your organization. And the trouble when he discovered was a lot of people in the organization didn't really understand the new way. They didn't understand the way the new way Malay had gone. You will find people in business who don't understand when things have changed. And you have to either re-educate them or move them along. There is no, there's no middle way because they can become a drag on the, on the organization. And von Hammerstein's idea, when you think about it, if you imagine it as sort of square, very bright and very lazy is up there, very bright and very industrious is down here, very stupid and very lazy is over here, and very stupid and very industrious is up there. What he was really saying is we all live somewhere in here, and depending where we err towards suggests where we best are in the organization. So he said... People who are very bright and very lazy are the perfect generals because they'll know what needs to be done, but they're too lazy to do it, so they get other people to go and do it. And that's how delegation works. That's how armies work. And he said the perfect soldiers in the German army, and it goes for all armies, certainly my battalion, are the people who are very stupid and very lazy because they're not bright enough to have their own ideas, and they're too lazy to do anything other than exactly what they've been told. So beware bright and lazy. And I'd say to you, if anyone comes in your organization with a good idea and he's got more than 150 PowerPoint slides, stupid and industrious, <laughs> find them something to do where they won't actually crash the business. 
And the trick ultimately is that when you get people joining the army, especially young officers coming uh, out of Sandhurst who've been to university with great ideas, they'll be full of innovation and good ideas. The trick is to get the people who have come up through years of experience in the business, who've seen it all before, to evaluate those innovations and tell them how they can make it work. And what it basically means is one can't work without the other. And spirit is ultimately about ownership. It's about people making them, uh, it's really getting people to understand that success is something that we collectively do. Success is something that works for us all. And ultimately, in terms of that, it's down to the leader. It's the guy at the front who has to be there to do that.